as we draw closer to Independence Day on July 4th, an article in the National Catholic Register examines a blessing on America 75 years ago from the Vatican. The article in the Register recalls the words of Pope Pius XII in 1946 when he said, quote, into the hands of America, God has placed the destinies of afflicted humanity. The statement would resonate in particular with a future U.S. president. Joining us now is Dr. Paul Kengor, professor of political science at Grove City College and author of A Pope and a President, John Paul II, Ronald Reagan, and the extraordinary untold story of the 20th century. Dr. Kengor, welcome back. Always great to be with you. Uh, you wrote the article in the register that we just mentioned. Tell us more about Pope Pius XII's message. What else did he have to say? And why did it strike a chord with Ronald Reagan? Yeah, thanks, Tracy. Good to be with you. Yeah, he wrote an article for Collier's Weekly, and Collier's was a, was a major publication at the time. It was January 5th, 1946. And so at that point, it's not even a full year after the end of the war in Europe. It's only a few months after the end of war in Japan. So World War II was not that far behind in the rearview mirror. And among the many people reading that at that time was, was an actor in Hollywood by the name of Ronald Reagan. And he was one among so many people in America, worldwide, that was touched by that. And, and that phrase, into the hands of America, God has placed an afflicted humanity Pius XII said, he said, the American people have a genius for splendid and unselfish action. And his point there, and he had learned this, Tracy, when he came to America in 1936 as, as Secretary Eugenio Pacelli, who was the Secretary of State to the Vatican. So he had spent some time in America, and he had seen the special role that America had played in World War I, in World War II. And at this point, that article in Collier's January 1946, I mean, think about the historical context here. That's, that's two months before Winston Churchill came to America with his Iron Curtain speech saying, America, we need you, the world needs you. So the Pope, ahead of Churchill on this, ahead of so many world figures at that point, said that, America, we need you now. You, you came to the rescue to the world in fighting Nazism in World War II, and now that new enemy out there, international atheistic communism, the Soviet Union, Bolshevism, into the hands of America again, God, God is placing an afflicted humanity. Yeah, and the future president used that phrase that we talked about in a speech in the summer of 1976. And it turns out that same summer, another historic figure was in America, specifically in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Yeah, and, and so Ronald Reagan used that line probably a dozen times. I mean, I should go through it. I should have checked before I came, came on, but in my book, A Pope and a President, I cite, I think, at least a dozen occasions of Reagan using that line all the way up through the 1980s when he was president. And so he used it as the penultimate line before his sign-off, God Bless America, in a, in a speech at America's Bicentennial that summer. And that same summer, I mean, imagine the, the coincidence here, right? Well, Pope John Paul II said um, that to a Christian, there's no such thing as coincidence. He was in America as the Archbishop of Krakow, Cardinal Carol Wojtyla, and he was there for an international Eucharistic Congress of all places in Philadelphia, where the American founding began. And he gave a speech in, in the city of brotherly love on the, on the Eucharist and man's hunger for freedom. And he made the statement there, Tracy, he said, freedom is a gift of the creator, a, you know, a, a flat out endowment to humanity, an endowment to humanity. And he said there, the American people, the American founders understood what freedom meant, um, how God intended people to use freedom. And the warning that he said there and that we should, we should hearken back to today, he said, God gave us freedom, but he gave us freedom to use it well. We're supposed to use it for good, not for ill. Yeah, and before I let you go, you know, as we approach Independence Day on Sunday, I'm wondering, do you have any thoughts or reflections that you'd like to share with us when it comes to the birth of our nation? Yeah, at this time when the New York Times is running the 1619 Project, talking about how America was found on systemic racism, America began when the first slave ships arrived here in 1619. No, I mean, what, what Pius XII understood 
what John Paul II understood, what Ronald Reagan understood, what we all understood, is America really begins in 1776. And we were the first nation, one of the first nations, to abolish slavery. Thomas Sowell, the, the great African-American historian, said, what's so unique about, about America is not that we had slavery, because every continent has had it for thousands of years, but, but that we ended slavery and lost 600,000 boys in a war, a civil war, to fight to end slavery, to provide that promise of God's freedom to all human beings of all races. And, you know, that, that's what this special and unselfish and splendid America that Pius XII spoke of was all about. And we need to keep that flame alive. We need to keep that memory alive. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for coming on and talking with us. We really appreciate it. And happy Fourth of July to you. Same to you. Thank you, Tracy.